Okay, um, yes, welcome everyone to our, I think it's our fourth class. So first, you know, thank you for coming, uh, so many of you to the lecture. I think, you know, it's, um, it's, you know, it's nice to receive a guest. They took their time. He's based in Sheen, very close to po Poshgrun in South Norway. And he took his time and his effort to come here, to travel, to, you know, give us a lecture and then go back. And I think it's nice that, you know, the, the least we can do is just be there and just, you know, hear what he has to say. Um, okay, so, <clears throat> um, just a few things, okay. Um, like I told you, I published on my website. Uh, the draft, okay. The, this, not, this is not the final... Um, exercise okay we're the exercise set number one but it's a draft but I'm putting there the two first exercises the first one you should have already enough knowledge to you know to make it uh, that's the exercise we had in class and then the second one we will hope to have some time to discuss it today uh, but then there will be two more problems that are not yet there but after those are published then you will have usually it's two weeks to deliver it okay so I will suggest you go and you know start working on them but uh, you will have from the from you know the publishing the the final version you will have two weeks from that from that point and another thing is I published um, you know you were asking about the compendium so I published um, the compendium and um, it has some parts taken from some book that uh, I recommended to you at the beginning of the semester but most of the parts it's uh, like my notes that I made so so far uh, we have covered um, thing down to here okay we already told you to do the PDO part okay and this article is very nice you know it gives you a very good overview about the commissioning so I recommend to read it uh, but we are up to here and we are going to have some discussion on that next but these are like it covers some of the things we say in class some things are not covered in the compendium but also covers some more things that I don't have time to cover okay so I recommend that you go and, and check it also I put another link which is uh, two papers that are to my opinion they are very important they give you a very good overview but I recommend, you know, I maybe can indicate to you when you have enough knowledge to read it. Okay, I think it's better that we establish the base first and then you have enough, like, concepts, enough knowledge to go and dive into it and really get the most out of it. Okay, but these are two articles that, that uh, this one, it's, you know, gives you a very nice overview of the development process on many tools that we are going to cover. And the second one is a very classical paper on... Uh, on development of gas fields. Okay, it's from Van Damme, an engineer, I think he was in Shell. Okay, but it, it gives you, so when we talk about the field performance, I think that's a very nice paper to read. Mm -hmm. But this, like I said, we are not going to evaluate it in the course. It's a bit more advanced, but I think it's nice if you have some curiosity to go a bit beyond that you can go and read it. Yes, uh, so any question before we start our session, late, delayed session today? No? Okay. Yes, so last class we were discussing the production modes of the field. And remember, you have to wake up at night, in the middle of the night, I ask you and you say <coughs> mode A, mode B, okay, plateau or just decline. And when operating in plateau mode, has a rule of thumb, okay, has a first approximation of the field, has a first approximation okay, one can say that I can say an annual offtake of annual offtake is how much I'm going to drain from the reservoir every year and usually the number is like 10% for oil fields. 10% of what? Of 
TRR and TRR stands for Total Recoverable Reserves. Um, we also call it in, remember, SP doesn't allow to have, you know, more than one capital letter. Okay, so we have to talk about, if we talk about oil, it's called N, okay, P, U, Ultimate Cumulative Production of Oil. Okay. Or if it's gas, it's called GPU, Ultimate Gas Cumulative Production. Okay. But you know that you're also familiar with the term, you know, we call it total recoverable reserves. And for gas, it's something between two to five percent per year. Okay. So how based on that, okay, that gives me volumes, right? So how do I calculate what will be the plateau rate? How do I have to size my facilities based on that number? <coughs> well, the plateau rate is just, if we say it's oil, will be 0 0.1 times NPU, right? Divided by the number of days that I will be producing during the year, right? Yes or no? Yeah? One is the volume that I will take during the year. I'm going to assume I'm in producing in plateau mode, so every day I will be producing the same number, the same rate. So I just have to divide that by the total number of days. So it will be the producing And you say, you ask me, well, why don't you assume 365? The reality is that the field is not producing, usually it's not producing the 365 days of the year. Okay, you have stops, you have maintenance, you have all kind of things that happen. And then you have a number that is called uptime. Okay, and it's usually given in percentage. And is the, the producing number of days per year divided by the number of days per year and this is a number that we are going to be using a bit in our in this <coughs> class but you know, very simple, I divide by the number of days in a year and I find what will be my plateau rate. And that's the first approximation. Remember the real number I find it, we will see now by maximizing the economic value of the project. Okay, I have to try with several numbers. Higher number gives me higher ca capex, you know, more expensive facilities, but it gives me big revenue. Lower number gives me lower capex, you know, less costly, uh, processing facilities but it gives me also less uh, revenue so I have to find a balance between the two and for gas it's um, you know the same thing but only using here 0 0.02 to 0 0.05 times GPU divided by the producing number of days per year okay that can also help you a bit to know the size to get an idea of the size of the reservoir okay if it's not listed you say well that field is producing this plateau rate so I met, might get an indication is it a field of 100 million barrels 200 <coughs> mi million barrels is it a million barrel field so you get from there an, an, an indication also Okay, so that's, that's just keep that in mind. That's the first approximation. Okay. Now, um, expanding a bit the discussion that we had last class, okay? Remember that we said 
you don't have to look only at the main product, if it's an oil field at the oil production, or if it's a gas field at the gas production, but you also have to look at the associated products that come with it. That means the gas uh, and the water, or the oil and the water. Why, why did I say that? Why do we have to take care of these products? Okay. Because they have, our facilities will be designed with a maximum capacity. Okay. And if for some reason we reach that capacity, either on the gas or either on the water, we won't be able to just keep production. Okay. Keep the plateau production. Just to give you an example. So say, um, so this, we are going to call it production limited by um, a, a, the capacity okay, and we are going to look at the data of hydron it's a field that is located um, just you know some kilometers out of uh, Trondheim okay is located here you know I yeah this data is so public you can go yourself and go to NPD and find it but actually the field is located here okay and it's an oil field and it looks uh, the layout we will see you know later we are going to talk about the layout or the development concept of the of the field <coughs> but the layout it's um it's like a floating concrete structure called like a semi submersible and then you have subsea templates where you know there are they are the production is tied with flow lines and at the end they reach this main um, offshore you know floating structure and here you have all processing etc okay so you, that's just an example and we are going to look at the um, so let me here I think I have some more um, information taken from the same website Okay, so let's look at the, you know, this production data we had from, I told you, was open. And here we see in uh, red is the, remember the colors, okay, red for gas, let's see if I remember also, uh, green for oil and blue for water. Okay, and gas is plotted here on the, on the secondary axis and oil and water and liquid are plotted here on this axis. And here I have plotted the, that's the maximum water processing capacity. Should put it in, in blue, right? This is the maximum oil processing capacity. This is the maximum liquid processing capacity. And this is the maximum gas processing capacity. Okay, and if you see, we will talk, you know, I guess you already have some background about the process, but usually we have a main process called separation, okay, where I separate and I get three streams. Here I have the streams from the well, okay, well streams. That is basically a mixture of oil, gas, and water. And then I get here three separate streams that are gas. Then I have oil. And then I have water. And then I have, after each one of them, I have another box, which is the water processing train, the oil processing train, 
and the gas processing train and I can do different things inside this box okay to prepare the streams further and each one of them has you know a maximum capacity that I did by design okay I, I assume a number by design so let's see at this plot and let's see you know it's an oil field right hydrogen is not a gas field but just look does something lo look suspicious to you in this plot production plot <coughs> oil is going down. okay oil is going down and it's a new facility is like it was built from scratch, a standalone processing facility. So say, well, why oil is going down? It should be like, a, you know, unless the plateau was very short, okay? Mm -hmm. But here we have an indication, what, you know, why should it's going down. And look at the gas, okay? The gas, initially, you know, if, if you know, the GOR has different behavior, depending on the kind of field that I have, okay but but you see that the gas is increasing and increasing and increasing until it gets very close to the processing capacity okay so maybe this field what you get from looking at this plot is that maybe okay we are not sure we're just assuming we haven't talked to anyone working in hydrogen that is this field was supposed to operate in oil plateau okay but at some point the gas reach the limit in the capacity and then I cannot produce any more oil. I cannot continue the plateau because I will produce more and more gas with time. And I have already reached my gas processing capacity. So the only option is to choke back my wells, okay, and to decline the production. That's just an assumption, okay? I'm not, sh I'm not saying it's true or not, but that's how typically it looks. All of you see it? Yeah? Okay? very clear you see well i could be able to produce more oil here but then the gas will just spike up and then i cannot process this gas so then there is no choice i have to choke even though i have you know i might have enough energy to produce for more years just you know that's the limitation but how come the water rate is going up the water is yeah going up like you choke it and then water is increasing yeah you might have water cloning oil. you might have aquifer breakthrough you might have all yeah, kind of different things okay but water the point about water is that it's way below the okay the the limit of the facility so maybe water is not a constraint in that particular field was this the dotted black line up here? that's a uh, liquid okay that's oil plus water and usually each train has a maximum capacity for oil gas and water but here you have a maximum liquid capacity on the separator <coughs> that you need to achieve you know the fluids in the separator they have to be certain time to be able to separate okay if you don't give enough residence time in this big volume then you don't achieve proper separation okay? and if you start increasing that amount more and more then you 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 don't reach you, you don't have enough residence time okay <coughs> so just that was an example of what we were discussing last class so it's not it's important the main product which is the oil okay that's what's going to give me my revenue that's when but also keep an eye on the 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 other things the water and the gas because they might be bottlenecking your your field and then doesn't matter how nice plateau you made how nice your NPV calculations you made and then after year two you say well I cannot produce that rate because you don't make you didn't make the compressor train big enough okay and then that's a big failure okay so don't don't underestimate all the time and here in the prediction <coughs> of these rates okay there is a lot of uncertainty because gas you know it's it's the coning process how quick it reaches and breaks through through the through the oil layer okay if you have if we see it in a very simplistic way we have gas then we have oil and then we have water yeah let's say our well is completed here okay we can have breakthrough of gas depending on the the permeability Okay, 
the maybe some part is more permeable than the other maybe you you know designed the completion and and it was the sound was slightly different so this is very difficult to predict just by numerical model okay from the beginning okay and another thing i want to comment before you know from last class is something called introduce you like you think about something called production potential hmm? and we are going back just for a while to this tank uh, analog okay that we had okay one very interesting question I got last class was that you say well you know you're painting really the it's like you're dividing in two parts okay you're saying the reservoir is a tank and then you have the flow from the from the you know someplace far from the well all the way to the well bore so you're painting that with this pressure drop but actually it's false okay you have the two processes are happening at the same time the reservoir has both the storage okay and it has both also the pressure drop through the formation okay, and here I have decided to put both separately and one goes after the other okay but that's very correct but what uh, you know what this uh, this question you know what they said is is too you know I painted here separate but in reality it's something that is at the same time okay but we you know human our thinking process you know sees it better if we make it in two, two separate sequential processes okay so we have here that's the formation and here we have the tubing okay and here we had the choke right and here let's say we have our separator so the potential we are going to say is the maximum rate okay or the maximum production that I can obtain right that I can produce from my production system okay and I will make a dependence of this variable so let's call it Q uh, PP okay production potential and I'm going to say is a function of what so in this system let's say I have at a certain time T0 okay I have a certain reservoir pressure PR0 okay what will be the production potential of this system when will it happen when will I achieve it the maximum production possible from this system from this analog is when the choke is fully open right okay so if I put here reservoir pressure and I here put PR 0 okay that means reservoir pressure at time 0 then let's say here it's open choke okay the maximum that I can get from that system but in principle regulating the choke I can get any rate below the potential right not above the potential any rate below so all of these rates they are feasible rates all of these rates all the way when the closest the choke is fully closed is zero do you see that okay and it's a function of reservoir pressure now what happens when reservoir pressure goes down the potential also goes down right and we don't know exactly how it goes down depends on the properties of the gas can be linear can be curved or the fluid okay if it's liquid but it will go down following certain trend hmm? okay and again any rate feasible rate it will be below that curve right yes okay Okay, until P, let's say any generic PR at the time T. Should be not the hmm? P reservoir, P0. Should be the French, the Should pressure. be? The what? The? The French, the 
Yeah, this. Um, yeah, this. Yeah, this is uh, descending. Okay, descending um, order. Okay, but if that you are correct, if we want to make it from zero to from small to big, then it, the curve should go the other way, right? That's very yeah. Somebody is awake. Not me, I'm not awake, so that's very correct. Okay, so you have here PR zero, right? And here is where I have the maximum rate, okay, and then it goes down like this. Yeah, all of you agree? Yeah, we were a bit sleepy, so we are excused, or I don't know, maybe not. Okay, and all of this is the, the, so you will see this production potential coming up, maybe some of the lectures we will have, is the maximum rate, production rate that the field can deliver at the given reservoir pressure. Okay, now it, the, like you know, reservoir pressure can be related to, it can also be made as a function of, no, cumulative production, right? Depends how much I have taken from the reservoir. If we say the tank, I have no injection, nothing. The tank has just certain volume. Then the reservoir pressure is just a function of what is inside the tank, right? So I can say that it's a function of QP. Well, QP will be the integral of the rate from zero to time T dt, right? And this can be NP, how much I have produced, or GP, if it's gas, okay, gas or oil, right? That clear? Yes? Okay. Then I can make exactly the same plot, okay, QPP versus, okay, QP, okay, or NP or GP, and how is it going to look like? When, when this number is zero, Okay, when I haven't produced anything, what do I have? Reservoir. Initial reservoir pressure, right? So then in that case, I should have the highest potential that, I, you know, possible, right? And then when I start producing and I get closer here, at some point I have the ultimate QPU, okay? The ultimate cumulative production, when I abandon the field, I, you know, close production, then you know that's where I have the lowest production potential from my field okay so I want to you know I uh, because that we we continue on that discussion on a class later class but just remember this concept okay production potential fully open choke okay if I my system has a choke fully open choke and I can produce any rate below that and really reservoir pressure I can put it has a function of how much I have taken out of the reservoir mm. and then it looks something like that we will use that later for for an exercise and for a discussion okay but I just want you to, to <coughs> think about it now you know I just just to check if you understood correctly so now let's say we have another system but I don't have a choke now, but I have I have a compressor, okay, at the wellhead. So what will be the, when do I achieve the production potential of that system? Well, you get, we, maybe you don't know yet much about compressor. But you get the idea that if you operate the compressor at the highest speed, right, you're going to get the highest rate, right? So in that case, for that particular production system, the production potential happens when you are operating at maximum uh, speed, okay, rotating speed. Yes? Okay, so keep that in mind, not only when we have choke, but when we have some other elements. Okay, usually the most common is choke, but, uh, you know, just to make you aware of that. 
Now I want to give some, you know, a few comments to complement the the um, um, the plateau discussion. Okay, so we have a a very important difference between oil and gas developments. Okay. One of them is the what we call the transportability. That's the first issue. Transportability. Okay. Oil is extremely easy to transport. I just use a tanker, okay, and I just put it in the tanker and send it. And the, even that tanker doesn't have to have a fixed destination yet. Okay, you might have some, the way it works in Statoil, you have some people, you know, some negotiators in the phone. Okay, how much do you give me for this load of oil? How much do you give me? And they try to make the best deal possible. And then they send it finally to the refinery, okay, when they are going to accept it. But in the meantime, they can have the tankers floating on the ocean, just waiting, you know, to, to sell it to the best, um, to the best price. Um, and actually, you know, these people make a lot of money. You know, if I go and fix something on the well, maybe I make, you know, a little, a little bit better. But these people, they can get huge earnings on the, on the, you know, on the field. Um, and then uh, gas has an issue that gas you have to, what do you have to use to sell gas? You have to use a pipeline, right? So in that case, it's not so simple. Gas, I cannot just put it in a tanker and say, well, I will sell it whenever I want. I have to have an infrastructure. Okay, for oil, I can use it in a tanker. And maybe you heard that, um, I think it was some, in China, there was some fears that they were hoarding oil, that they were having a huge patio with a lot of um, of tanks, you know, just saving oil for <coughs> when the prices, you know, are, are, are higher. So you can do that with oil, but for gas, you rely on transportation by a pipeline. Okay, so you have to have a pipeline in place. Yes? But you can also transport gas as LNG. Mm -hmm. We'll go to that. Uh, so by pipeline, you have to have an infrastructure. An infrastructure. And you have to have a customer. Not only that you have to have the pipe, but also comes to the second part that you have to have in gas, you have to have a contract. It's not only sufficient that you have the pipeline and you say, well, nice, and you send it to there and someone will use it. You have to have that someone that is going to use your gas. And there is a need for that gas. And many different clients are power generation plants, are uh, concrete plants, are, um, are maybe some process industry that needs that gas to, to burn, okay, for the houses, for homes, to for heating. You need to have a client. You need to have a customer. Okay, and that's exactly, that's the main difference between gas and oil. Uh, and you have to have a contract, and this contract is usually for uh, for a long time, okay? This, this might be everything from five years to maybe 30 years. And you have the, the comp, for example, is for some, usually these contracts they have um, something called DCQ, Daily Contract Quantity. Excuse me? Yes? This contract, you mean uh, transfer uh, uh, for some... Uh, it's called a sales contract, uh, sales contract, okay? Okay, you mean customer... You, 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 assume, you assume the you have the compromise to deliver 10 million standard cubic meter per day, to this client in Europe that will generate power for 5,000, 1 million houses, okay? Mm -hmm. If you don't deliver one day, these people are going to, you know, be have a blackout, mm -hmm. okay? So it's really um, 
it's like you know you ha you have to really deliver what you or they have to get the gas from someone else i mean the contract uh, between uh, company and uh, transporter or company and the customer company and the customer okay they are they are different we are not i i don't want to go into the the different contracts you have but you have to have someone that is going to take your gas mm -hmm. okay someone that is going to buy your gas if it's an intermediary or if it's a third party or is it directly the the power generating uh company but you have to have an agreement a sales contract a sales agreement to sell this gas okay and you commit to a daily contract quantity that depending on the rate of your field you know 10 million 20 million 5 million and then you are, are uh, fixed on a swing factor, okay? That means if at any point in time, this uh, company or this network, they need more gas, you should be able to supply it. Okay, and it can go everything from 20%, maybe to 40%, that you can deliver at any point in time, 40% more gas, just because the, you know, you need, you need that gas. And then also a penalty, usually these contracts, they have a penalty clause that if you cannot deliver the DCQ, then you have to pay a penalty for them. Okay. <coughs> now, um, you know, maybe you heard of LNG, okay, this liquefied natural gas. And this tries to make gas more like oil. Okay. I I I put high pressure, very low temperature, and I try to liquefy the methane. Okay, and then after it's liquid, I can transport it in a in a big vessel, in a big a ship. Maybe you have seen it in the in the news, something that has a shape like this. Okay? And that's an attempt to put gas in a tanker and then to be able to sell it any place. Okay, the problem is to make this process first to take the gas and to make it into LNG. You know, it looks like a very simple box, but it's a very complicated process. It's a process that has to be extremely, extremely precise. It's a process that many, many things can go wrong. It's, it's like, you know, the top of the top of processing equipment has to be, you know, has to be there. So is is usually very expensive okay and you cannot find it everywhere to to make that process and then you have to have the opposite which is also extremely challenging and extremely costly that you have to take this lng and re-vaporize it again to transport it into gas okay so you have to have the lng plant and the lng terminal to receive that product so still you know, it's a LNG is a way to make it more like oil, but steel is not perfect. It's not like simply anyone can take it because oil, you put it in a tanker, you don't have this <coughs> intermediate process and the oil, you just put a pump and suck it from the tanker. Okay. In this case, you need a whole plant to make that conversion. Okay. So keep that in mind. And there are not many, you know, there are, it's becoming more and more spread more and more countries have these terminals so it's becoming more and more flexible but it, we haven't reached yet the point of the um, you know of the um, uh, of the oil okay for example the 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 gas from snow white okay, is a field snowit is a field that is if we see norway something like that right so it's a field that is very up north that he was discussing in the lecture, 146 kilometers from shore. That field here, you have an LNG plant because you have no pipes at that point. You have no flow lines, you have no pipelines. And then where, how are you going to take that gas to the market? So here they have that LNG plant that turns it into liquid. And then you have the tankers that go all the way to Spain to a customer that they had already a pre-agreed uh, contract, okay? Yes. Um, okay, so that's keep that in mind. Okay, for oil and gas, oil very simple. Tanker gas is an issue. I have to have where to send the gas, a pipeline. 
And if I don't have anything around, what do I do with the gas? Okay, good question, good answer. It, we will say flare it. Flare it is not permitted anymore. It's forbidden in many countries in the in the world. So then I have to find a way to reinject it. Hmm? And what is the problem with reinjection? Reinjection, I need compressors, more expensive energy usage. Okay, and then another thing is that I might affect the coning, this coning process. Okay, I have more gas entering into the reservoir and then the GR starts to increase. Okay, so injection is the only option if, if I don't have any other place to send the gas, but it can create a lot of issues. Okay, so keep uh, always the gas I try to, to you know, to, to send it someplace. Okay, you need a break? Yeah. Yes, okay, let's say 10 minutes. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so now I, I want to talk very briefly also about, uh, so that if, if you want to read a bit more, but it's basically the, you know, the, what I told you, you can go to the compendium, is page uh, 211, and then they have some more details about, um, but it's basically these two things, okay? And why can we sell oil so, you know, so uh, at such a good price? is just the energy that it has inside, okay? The energy density. Uh, this liter of oil has a lot of energy and I can use it for many things, while, you know, the same volume of gas, it has much less energy. But you can read that part if you want, if you wish to complement here. But I want to talk now a bit very short about um, onshore versus offshore. Okay, and onshore, offshore, the way the production profile looks like, time. I have a ramp up, but the ramp up is relatively steep, okay? And then I have my plateau production and then decline. And as I told you before, the ramp up is very short. Basically, one thing, I have to have the facilities already in, pre in place, okay, to process my, my liquids. But also I have to start recovering cash very quick. Okay, I have I'm lacking oxygen. If you remember the the cash flow diagram, or maybe I show it to you, maybe not. The cash flow versus time of the project is initially going down. I'm burying myself, okay, in depth. Here I have all of this depth above me and I want to get rid of it. And then I start getting production and I start getting up and up and up and up until I get a positive you know, uh, uh, cash flow. So I want to get to that point and to reduce that time, you know, make it as quick as possible, this ramp up. While onshore, and, and that causes some issues, right? So that, um, so let's put here, I will take that. Um, get the main intention okay is to short ramp up ramp yes I think so. Yes. Because last time. Yep. I. That's why you have to always. You know, it's good that you're you're checking what I'm doing because. Um, that, that's why I don't want to make any guarantees that. You know. Okay. That's that's. Um, revenue as quick as possible and that means that you know usually when you start producing the field you know when you make um, let's say um, during exploration 
an appraisal we get limited information or as best as we can get but at the end it's very limited about the extent of the reservoir how the reservoir is divided okay if it's divided in sections and about the productivity of these wells okay you have ways that you with exploration wells you can test how much is going to produce okay but these drilling rigs usually is not that you can leave it for a long time producing but you only make a very limited and very short test okay so in that case we say that the information gathered about the reservoir is limited and what we say static and this information is might be extension depth then permeability porosity okay first is limited i just make a few holes if it's a very like i told you last class is if it's a relatively medium to small size i don't make many appraisal wells okay after i have the discovery i might make like maybe maximum four or five wells and then based on that i have to get a whole picture of what i have below the surface okay if it's a big development okay i might have maybe 10 or 15 but you know usually these are you know not very not very common and static meaning that i have no idea if the regions in the reservoir they are communicating okay if I make something here it will also propagate through this well okay how how are how are um, uh, static okay about the connectivity so it's uh, we call it um, con uh, hydraulic connectivity okay. I have no really good idea about the productivity of the well I have no also not a good idea of how the 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 type of aquifer that I have and also I have some um, sealing sealing faults okay or sealing mechanisms and i'm not sure really if that really sealing or if it will allow some flow to go from one side to the other so all of this information is very limited so the conclusion is that i have to take a big decisions with limited information okay and I have to assume, for example, that's especially important for, you think that you can develop in the reservoir, you can develop certain region with one well, okay? Because you think this will drain, let's say you have an area like that. Excuse me, this uh, sailing, mechanism? Sailing, sealing me sealing <coughs> mechanism. mechanism. <laughs> that's also okay that you're checking the handwriting, so that forces me to I'm not sure if it was better or not okay you assume that if you put a well here okay it's also going to drain force the drainage of that volume right but then it might happen that there is also no communication due to a fault or something you didn't see in the seismic that here you just have a blockage and there will be no communication and you won't won't recover that volume okay so that those kind of things you know, I if I was able to put that well in production, okay, and maybe drill an appraisal or some other well for a longer time, then I might know well the volume ar around this well, it you know it it um, corresponds to just this volume, okay, <coughs> and then I take a better decision. I'd say well I will drill another well here to drain this other pocket that it will be left behind otherwise, okay those kind of things i cannot do it in offshore but i can do it onshore okay so big decisions limited information here i prefer to make here the ramp up usually is very very long okay and then i start producing in plateau 
So the ramp up is usually very long. I produce with a few wells, okay, just to test what is the connectivity in the reservoir, what kind of volumes I have, what is the productivity of the well. So I produce uh, with a few wells initially two neighboring facilities. Okay, usually have a region that I have a bunch of fields so I can take part of that production and I can send it to, to an existing facility. And then I can gather better and better information about the reservoir. Um, <coughs> and make a better planning. Also, a critical thing is the, um, for example, when you plan, you always have to plan on the reservoir the depletion strategy. Okay, how you're going to produce that fuel? What is going to give the energy? Is it just, you might have, um, you know, just an aquifer that is going to support, you know, the, or you're going to do it um, uh, just with gas injection or water injection. So to plan water injection, here you have to plan water injection or gas injection from the beginning like here I can plan water or gas injection at a later stage Okay. Or I can start making a pilot. I don't have to drill all the wells at the same time. I can start making a pilot in one part of the, w the field, see how it behaves. If it responds well, my assumptions about the vertical connectivity were correct. And then I can start and make the pilot through the whole field. Okay, in this one, remember, I have to buy everything from, you know, from the first day. How much <coughs> water I have to process, the injection pumps that I need. Uh, the number of injection wells that I need. It's not something that I can delay with time. And if for some reason there is no communication, I say, well, with two wells, it's, it's enough, okay? And then I see that there is no communication. Maybe I will need 10 wells to make it very effective. And that's, you know, that is a big, uh, a big fail. What else did I have? Long ramp up. So this is long appraisal. <coughs> Okay, and long and detailed. And here is short ramp up and limited appraisal. If and also another thing is that here you can uh, perform, you can fine tune your models. You can have the reservoir model, you can make it uh, because you already will have some production data, right? If you do it very, very slow, you're going to be improving your reservoir model with time and then when you have you make the planning you have like a more <coughs> real or a more realistic model of your reservoir system okay so you can use fine-tuned reservoir models um, and use them for planning okay while here you have let me go to the next page um, very uncertain reservoir models. 
because I have no production data to validate those models. Okay, are they're just static. I have no no way to validate. Well, I predict that they will produce like that, but in reality, they produce might produce some other number. So here it's extremely important to have a person with enough experience that can do the best with the very limited data they they gathered. Okay, it, it was gathered. Okay, but also one more thing is that keep in mind remote um, onshore fields. That means fields that, for example, there are a few of them that are in the desert or fields that are in the jungle, okay, that are have almost no infrastructure, very little connection to existing fields. They behave like an offshore field. You have to develop it like an offshore field. And really one of the jokes is that here you make all the assumptions, you take decisions where to drill the wells, where to start up everything, and then after that point the reservoir engineer says, well, I want to change. I want a new job, you know, I feel that I have done my part, I have done everything, and he, he escapes, okay? And then when they start saying, well, the guy said we should be producing like that, and in reality, we say, well, we are producing like that. What happened? Where is the reservoir engineer? And he left his some other place, you know, in the Caribbean, taking margaritas. Because if he's there in the company, say, well, what is the reason for that difference? Uh, oops. Okay. So keep in mind, if you're in a new development, just take that advice, you know. You might want to take a sabbatical or something to just when they are producing the fuel. Yes. <coughs> okay. Um, okay. I um, so now I want to talk about you know how during the development process we have to do something or we start to make a, an image okay or a model of the value chain uh, the value chain model of the asset okay or of my field and this is like all the main key parts first to organize my project to see how i'm going to develop how i'm going to make the development of my field i have to start populating the most important boxes and how they are connected we will see now how it looks like but then something very important is to to be able to decide okay i told you that we had this process where we have decision gates okay along the way but we have to have something that we base our decisions on right we have to have some kind of parameter besides the technical sometimes there might be two options three options that i can do the three but i have to find something to you know to to decide between them so we are going i'm going to make here um yeah, uh, figure. So first we have yeah, an East Central, okay? That's no mistake. This is the most important part of the asset. That is the reservoir. That we have to get, our main idea is to get just a very good image or as close as possible to reality that I can with the limited data I have. So here we have different things coming inside. So it's reservoir structure. And volume. And the volumes are very important, especially to ask for, for money for different things. We will see, we're going to have an example maybe next week here in class. But we have to know how much oil we have and how much gas we have because we just multiply that number by the price and then we know how big our project is okay then we need uh, the rock properties okay then we have the fluid properties Okay, and fluid, sometimes, you know, I cannot emphasize 
that is extremely extremely important you might say well your reservoir for example if you see from the cross section has this shape okay and you are very concerned about the extent and about you know the thickness and the extent the area how is it spread you know you put a lot of effort on that but remember at the end that volume we're going to take it to surface okay through a process okay we are going to put here a house and here we're going to get oil and gas that process depends very much on the properties of the fluid okay if I have something very heavy I will get almost no gas but if I have something very light I will get a lot of gas and then that will change completely the volumes I have these are the volumes that I sell at the end okay so if we make a lot of effort here to know the the geometry the extent the the accumulation we also have to make a lot of effort here okay because at the end that's what's going to give me if I take that to the surface how is it going to behave okay and if here I say let's say I have 80 billion barrels okay 80 million barrels that I bring to surface okay if I have a factor called BO right and then I say that factor might be 1.25 or 1.21 and that big change that big multiplier that big difference makes a difference in the order of the million or billions of dollars okay just because I am not estimating correctly that number okay so I just just a small comment to tell you that that's something to be very careful um, in the okay at an early stage we don't use that you know we want to populate a reservoir model okay but we use that also for making another box we are going to cover next week hopefully that is called reserve estimation and that means exactly that number that TRR that I mentioned above how much do you think you know first how much I have and how much from that amount I will be able to recover in the surface okay here I have of course this recovery factor okay I usually call it RF or using SP nomenclature is FR okay recovery factor and that comes either from experience type of field okay but it's very extremely extremely uncertain but that's the first step and then my value chain starts to you know having a more uh, a bigger um, <coughs> a reservoir model then I go further and then I go to what I call the production system okay, and in my production system and especially for an offshore field I have some of the main boxes that I have to fill first the wells okay how many wells I need how I'm going to drill these wells what kind of completion equipment toys are going to have inside okay uh, who is going to drill these wells what is the schedule what well I'm going to drill first if I have injection wells, where are they going to be located? Then I have one that is a gathering system. Okay, how to carry from the wellhead? I have to commingle all of that production and take it to the separator. Sometimes it's very simple. Sometimes I have a jacket platform and I drill all the wells from here, and they are just maybe. I don't know 500 meters from the separator so really the gathering system is not a big issue at all okay but sometimes my wheels are subsea maybe 10 maybe 20 kilometers and I have to find design a system to commingle that production and take it to the to the plant okay so this can be something very small very simple task but can be something extremely uh, uh, complicated and also here is where you have this um, you know what the guest lecture Paul um, Hetne that he was discussing today the flow assurance issue uh, then we have the very important the processing facilities 
okay what kind of processing I need um, depending on the type of fluid I have depending on how I'm going to sell this product okay do they accept that my oil will have my oil will have water do they accept that my gas will have this or that property so you have to target it to your to your facility to your um, fluid and then comes the offshore structure okay and we are going to have a separate lecture on that but basically defining what is the best structure that I can use to develop my field is it a platform is it an FPSO is it a semi submersible and there are different things to consider there okay that reservoir and in a way that that production system okay I use it these two I use it to find the production profile okay that is defining how much I'm going to drain from the field in every point in time. Okay, sometimes in early phases I don't consider, you know, at all, I just use the reservoir and I neglect that part. Okay, but it depends, of course, it depends from case to case. Like I said, if you have all the wells, they are very close to each other and in the same platform. The gathering system is not really that important. Okay, I can just look at, at the reservoir model and that might be enough. But if I have the case of this snow white field that has a 146 kilometer transportation line, then to include that when computing how much this potential, okay, how much I will be able to produce, it's important. Okay, so it depends really on the case. So that's why I'm putting it like a, a dotted line. Okay. So that's how more or less my so far the physical things okay how it looks like he, here I have to have the production schedule and then I come to the to the the the, the what I told you the indicator okay here I have first something called CAPEX okay and CAPEX stands for capital expenditures okay and here I have the cost of the facilities okay I have the cost of the gathering system and here I'm referring to pipeline uh, templates subsea templates I have the cost of the umbilicals umbilicals Um, I have the cost of the offshore structure what else okay and of course the um, so the installation okay so the manufacturing installation manufacturing design okay I put it in the wrong order but it's design manufacturing and installation that's roughly what it involves then I have and this comes you know the input for this comes from here then I have another big chunk of the cost that is called the drillix And Drillex stands for drilling expenditures. Okay. 
and that will be drilling okay that that what is it is basically the drilling vessel it's a G, uh, daily rate of the drilling vessel okay it might be as big as one million dollars per day might be two hundred and fifty thousand dollars per day then all the materials all the tubulars that you use for the well completion materials well completion what else okay all the <coughs> the, su the surface equipment the well head and the Christmas tree okay and yep I think that's um, and all of these um, you know uh, tests while drilling Okay, and yes. Well, we're discussing a Christmas tree in drilling relax. Shouldn't we BOP instead of Christmas tree? Well, when you complete, finalize the well, you put a Christmas tree. Yeah. So that you have to include it in the cost of the of the drillings. Okay, the BOP is part, it's like your, the BOP, n the company d doesn't usually own. The Christmas tree has to stay with the well for the whole life. So that is something you have to buy. The BOP is something that comes from the vessel. You rent it, okay? Um, Unless it's a, a special size that you have to manufacture something. But it's usually something that comes with the with the vessel, with with the contractor. Uh, how about the BHA for the models? I think that's also rented. I think. Rented. Mm -hmm. So if it's rented, it's not part of the drilling. Well, you have to pay it, so it's a uh, expenditure. You have to pay. Materials. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's usually. It's in this daily rate that I put. Is the uh, drilling vessel, the contractors you have to pay, the equip, so the tools, drilling tools, rental of <coughs> drilling tools. This is this is why drilling. You mean logging or which testing? Uh, you have this DST drilling, uh, uh, drill steam test. You have uh, if you do logging, if you do uh, mud logging, for example, all these tests they cost and you have to pay if you need some of them. Okay, if you want to test, for example, you are you are drilling in one open hole section, okay, and then you come, and then you put a like a isolation here on this particular section. Let me make this. Yeah, and you start producing, actually you start flowing some of the fluids from the formation through the <coughs> stream. Just to get some information, first you make, you collect a sample of the fluid you have, then you say, well, how much, if I put here certain pressure, how much rate I get, so you get an idea of the productivity of the well, and, and those, maybe they're not done all the time, but you have to pay for these tests, okay, and you have to pay for the equipment to make these tests. This is called uh, DST, okay, drill stem stem test, I think. <coughs> uh, you have logging. You have all kind of <coughs> tricky things drillers do. Okay, then what else we have? Are we finished with the expenditures? How about the war proper? About? How about the war proper? The work, uh, sorry, the work, work offered, like the labor that. Um, uh, uh, yeah, these are not usually included in Drillex. These are included in OPEX. Okay. And yeah, so let's see here. This also takes information from here, and then you have here the OPEX. And the OPEX you have, first, operational expenditures.
Very important, what do you have here? The salaries, right? Of all of you, all of us that are going to be working, or that at least you're going to be working in the, in the company, so say the salaries of the engineers. Okay, maintenance. Um, you have to sometimes um, uh, replacement of equipment. Okay, then you have this intervention, will intervention. Um, what else we have in OPEX? We have the insurance. Okay, in case I always have to pay insurance, so I have to include that in the OPEX. What else? Power. If I'm using power from the from the net. What else? Low assurance. Hmm? Low assurance. I, I have I have a lot of chemicals and we will see that later in flow assurance. To to tackle some of these issues they were discussing today, hydrates, wax, we inject is almost like whiskey, okay, to my production system. Production chemicals. So it's um, I have to pay some of these chemicals. I recover many of them, but some of them I, I don't. I have to re, um, um, I have to refill. So I, I say production chemicals, and these I say these are uh, demulsifier, hydrate inhibitor. So a corrosion inhibitor, I have wax inhibitor, and we are going to have a separate lecture on that, but it's a bunch of things that I have to inject just to be sure I don't have any of these, of these problems. What else do we have in OPEX? You know, maybe we miss some things. No, it's not really OPEX, it's just operational expenditures. Okay, the commissioning is called uh, ABEX, Abandonment Expenditures. Okay? Transportation, cost, transportation. Transportation, fuel, um, mobilization from people from the from land to the platform. Yes? You were saying something? Yeah. Here we're focusing offshore, and it's a project you develop st standalone. Okay, you try to develop every all of these elements. If if you are in, a, for example, onshore US, you might drill one well. Maybe you use the separator of a friend, of a neighbor. Try to get so it's, it's different. Here we're focusing is a kind of a full project with every element there. But of course, it changes if you, for example, you're drilling just. Oklahoma, some professors here, they have a well in Oklahoma, so they just drill the well and they send it to a friend and they don't have to pay, Not many of these things are irrelevant, okay? And they're operating the well here from their office. They have a, a software that they can operate the pump, close the choke, etc. so. Yeah. Um, so where was I? Uh, so OPEX, let's, uh, maybe I will check if I missed something else, but I think this is mostly all. Uh, and then you have this famous ABEX, okay? That is what we discussed already, abandonment expenditures. And that usually, it, because you the government pays for most of this, is not included in the when you assess the value of the project. But includes flushing the the installation, um, disconnecting, um, uh, scrapping, removing the offshore structure, um, all, all these things. Transport. Okay, but to f you know, to f we are getting close to the date, so. I want to say here we have from the production profile you get the revenue 
So I made a mess now of this figure. And I have a problem here. So let's um so here you get the revenue. And mainly the revenue are the sales per year of oil and gas, okay? It can be LNG, can be NGL, natural gas uh, liquids, can be uh, LPG, liquefied petroleum gas, and we will see later what does it mean. Okay, but basically that's what I, that's what I sell. And LNG, NGL, LPG. What's the difference between LNG and NGL? <laughs> we we will talk. Uh, we will talk. Just you know, I have not much time. So, um, then we have something else, right? Uh, more expenditures that we have. What other expenditures we have? One thing, tax, okay, that we have to give and um, royalties, right, that we have to give to the government. And this is based on the production profile and the revenue, both. Sorry for the mess, but that's, I think, the only way. Okay. The royalties are usually based on how much I produce, and the tax is based on the revenue. Okay, so that's why I need both. And after I have all of those, all of those input to something very big called the NPV, okay, the net present value calculations. And I have to drag all of this, so let's see how we do it. It will be messy anyhow, so I apologize for that. Okay, OPEX, AVEX doesn't come, and then revenue. Then revenue, I'm going to take it from here. And that's what I use, you know, that just want to show you all the elements. So you have to have experts inside the company for each one of these elements. But at the end, these elements help to make, to allow you to calculate, to estimate the expenses, to estimate the revenue. And then you try to compound all of those values in something that we call net present value. We try to assign one single value or as, uh, uh, so something called NPV is one single value for the project that we try to characterize the project on that single number or also something called IRR internal rate of return okay and and with those numbers we will see next class tomorrow that we try to make decisions based on this number, but we compound everything, all the values we have, try to put it in one, and then based on that, we make our decisions, okay? There might be technical challenges here, why you cannot use one structure or the other, why you cannot drill one wheel or the other, but at the end, if I have, if I have several options, I use this model to compute a value for each one of these options, and then I take a decision, okay, yes? Uh, does the some part but not all of it okay not 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 the whole amount of abex because a big part a big chunk is paid at least here in Norway by the government okay right. and it's normally it's not is people don't make a big analysis on how I'm going to uh, decommission and abandon the fuel okay and they are saying now one of the changes is that it should be included in in the in the evaluation of the concepts okay how easy it is to to decommission the fuel yes we are almost on you know over the time okay any question before we close about the LNG LPG
No? Okay, so we see you tomorrow, okay? Um, 10, 10, 15. about the subsea systems they have only 